Welcome to Unit 4 of U.S. History, titled Establishing the New Nation. So this unit picks up where we left off after the first unit with the end of the American Revolution. So our first lesson is on the Articles of Confederation. Let me check the slide. Okay, so the Articles of Confederation. I don't want you to confuse this with the Constitution. Both have many similarities. You can think of the Articles of Confederation as a primitive form of the Constitution that we know today. So it served as the first attempt at a national government for the newly independent United States. Adopted in 1777 and ratified or edited in 1781, these articles established a loose confederation, meaning a unity, of sovereign states sovereignty meaning having the right for self-rule where each state retained significant independence now under the articles the central government had limited powers it could conduct foreign diplomacy maintain an army and manage relations with native american tribes but it lacked the authority to tax or regulate commerce effectively and this led to numerous problems so one of the most significant issues was financial instability. The central government could not tax, which meant it couldn't pay off its war debts or fund essential services like defense. States often issued their own currencies, leading to economic chaos. So they did not act as one, as we know the U.S. today. You can think of them as a collection of separate countries at the time, rather than one whole unit with a clear and coherent central government. The Articles of Confederation also highlighted the weaknesses of a decentralized government. Disputes among states, issues with trade, and a lack of uniform laws made it clear that a stronger, stronger central authority was needed. Okay, so moving on to lesson two, the Constitutional Convention. Now, the flaws of the Articles of Confederation prompted leaders to seek a more effective system of government. And so in 1787, delegates or representatives from 12 of the 13 states gathered in Philadelphia for the Constitutional Convention. The Constitutional Convention was a pivotal moment in American history. Delegates such as James Madison, Benjamin Franklin, and George Washington debated and crafted the U.S. Constitution, which would become the supreme law of the land. So think of the Articles of Confederation as the first draft, as you might do when you're writing up an essay, and the Constitution as the final draft, where you edit, where you take the opinions of others. So say you're publishing a book, a author always sends it to an editor and receives notes back, and then proceeds on to go to the to edit those, to make those edits before publishing the book. The Constitution created a system of government based on the principles of federalism. So federalism is where power is divided between a strong central government and individual states. It established a framework for a balanced federal government with three branches. These branches are very important for you to know. These are the legislative. This is where you make and amend the laws. The executive. This is where you enforce the law and the judicial. This is where you go to review the law so you can have, you, you can serve citizens' rights. Now, this separation of powers ensured that no single branch of government could become too powerful. So the legislative could not override the judicial, the judicial could not uh, override the executive, and so on. We call this a system of checks and balances as well. Now, delegates also grappled with issue, issues such as representation in Congress. Congress is um, the state, it's where, the, where, it's where every state has representatives and where they meet in Capitol Hill in the U.S. So the compromise they reached at the time known as the Connecticut Compromise, Connecticut, you might know it as a state in the Northeastern United States, created a bicameral legislature with proportional representation in the House of Representatives and equal representation in the Senate. So when we're talking bicameral, we're talking about two branches, you could say. 
one, the House of Representatives, and two, the Senate. Now, our final lesson of this unit is titled The Enduring Constitution. It brings us to the present day. So the U.S. Constitution, edited or in legal terms, ratified in 1788, has stood the test of time, becoming one of the world's oldest written constitutions still in use. Now, it had some influence from Roman literature or from Roman law, but that is not too relevant to our course for its purposes. Now, the Constitution has shown remarkable adaptability through something we call amendments. So the first 10 amendments, known as the Bill of Rights, were added shortly after ratification to protect individual liberties. Since then, 17 more amendments have been ratified, addressing issues like voting rights, presidential term limits, and more. The Constitution's flexibility and power of judicial review, established by the landmark case Marbury v. Madison in 1803, allowed it to evolve with society. The Supreme Court interprets the Constitution, shaping its application to modern challenges. So today, the Constitution remains a symbol of American democracy and a foundation of the nation's legal system. It has guided the United States through times of crisis and change, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement. So in conclusion, the Articles of Confederation demonstrated the need for a stronger central government. That is point number one. It led to the Constitution Convention and the creation of the U.S. Constitution. And this document has endured and it has provided the framework for American government and society for over two centuries. And its principles continue to shape the nation's course today. So, of course, the Articles of Confederation lesson is a little bit of a long lesson. It has many details. We'll try to simplify it as much as we can. We'll try to break it down into simple elements and try to create a simple mosaic at the end where we can understand how the Constitution came about. So thank you, and I look forward to seeing you in class.